So today we will be discussing about the scope of biomass energy in India. So we will be uh, dealing or uh, studying about the different type of biomass available in India, the how much quantity they are available, what are the different methods of converting the energy, biomass energy into another type of energy, maybe like any type of fuel, okay, through which we can perform any type of application, like we can generate electricity, we can power an automobile, okay, we can use it for heating, for lighting, for cooking, for many such type of applications, where there is a source of energy is needed or a fuel is needed. So how to convert the biomass into a fuel? So different type of methods available, then a short comparison, looking at the different advantages and disadvantages of each of the methods. And then finally, which one is the best? Then different availability of different type of biomass in India. So first of all, biomass yes it is a renewable source if it is not going to finish very soon it will last forever unlike the conventional sources another thing that the fuels which are derived from biomass or the methods for obtaining energy the end product that is environment friendly means it is not causing pollution or it is causing very less pollution as compared with the conventional sources Biomass is one such type of uh, raw material which is very less exploited in our country. Usage is very less. If we efficiently utilize all of the available biomass, then it will, it could be one of the most leading source of energy, a source of fuel available for us. So currently, what are the different type or different sources of biomass? So one is the forest, forestry crops and residues, agriculture crops and residues, and sewage and municipal solid waste, and animal residues, then industrial residues. So here we can conclude that in almost all of the sectors there is an availability of biomass, like the forest, the forest waste, the straw, the dried leaves, uh, aged trees, dead trees, and any such type of uh, the residue in the forest. That is a source of biomass. Then agriculture, crops and residues. So this is also biomass. The leftover residues stubble, straw, whatever is left, then sewage. So here we can see that the area, if it is under forest, if it is under cultivation, if it is under, it is a residential area. From there also we can obtain a source, obtain biomass which could be a source of energy or a fuel. Then animal residues. So here we will study in detail that how much, how many uh, animals, total count of the animals, total count of men and total count of animals is available. So correspondingly, animal residues, human uh, waste, animal waste, a huge amount of uh, resources available here. And in the last, industrial residues means if the area is under industry, it is under resi uh, residential area, it is area under the cattle farming or is it under the cultivation or is it under forestry everywhere the biomass is available so we can utilize it now having a look at the different processes which can which are opted for obtaining energy from biomass so broadly these type of processes are divided into two categories first is the thermal conversion and next is the biological conversion thermal Thermal conversion basically it is leading, it is dealing with heat. So that means high temperature. So three type of process falls under this category of thermal conversion. 
so they are combustion pyrolysis and gasification okay next category is biological conversion so here microorganisms are used to convert biomass into liquid or gaseous fuels okay as so, uh, the two process fall under this category one is fermentation and one is anaerobic digestion now having a brief introduction to each and every type of process combustion one of the most or the earliest method used for obtaining energy from biomass that is the direct conversion direct conversion usually it could be a open conversion the burning of some dried biomass it always takes place in the presence of oxygen it takes place at high temperature then what is obtained heat is obtained carbon dioxide water vapors and ashes they are obtained so for even many centuries we are using this method of combustion but is it efficient just open burning then no it is not efficient the type of the raw material of the biomass which is being combusted that depends on the how much energy we are getting and then the heat which we are getting are we prop, are we totally we are collecting that heat or is it being wasted it is diffused only a small amount of heat we are utilizing so that decreases the efficiency so due to this this process is well organized inside a combustor like here a combustor is here dry bio, dry biomass is fed inside then combustion take place then steam okay steam is produced by boiling the water this is much similar to that of a this is much similar to that of a thermal so this is a general process now this combustion inside a combustor that is a specified process very much similar to a thermal power plant but instead of coal we are burning biomass so is it okay to burn any type of biomass in a, this combustor then no it won't be efficient the amount of moisture the content of moisture in the biomass that largely depends on the amount of heat which will be obtained from the biomass so our biomass should be dry moisture content should be low okay so which type of uh, biomass can be used as a livestock as a feeding raw material like bark residues sawdust crop stubbles okay now the shape and size of the feedstock or the raw material like if a solid wooden piece if we will put it inside a combustor and we will start combustion will burn it then the amount of heat available will not be the maximum amount of heat which could be available for us if it is pulverized broken into small pieces then it is fed to the combustor or to the boiler then more amount of heat can be obtained from the same biomass same wooden piece so pelletized agricultural and wood waste are most popular option for biomass combustion so is it the most environment friendly method then i am said it is not the most environment friendly method because combustion it will give carbon dioxide flue gases that is not a desirable condition although it is better like normal okay so shall we go for it it is okay to go for it unless and until we are not having another suitable better option so what are the other options available let us discuss another option so next method is pyrolysis pyrolysis that is also dealing with high temperature okay so it is a thermal conversion method so it will be it takes place at high temperature but 
what is the difference between combustion and pyrolysis is that pyrolysis takes place in the absence of oxygen so we are heating the biomass but not in the presence of oxygen in the absence of oxygen so it is not burning biomass is not burning as is the case with combustion but it gets decomposed into three products solid liquid and gas solid product that is a charcoal liquid that is the bio oil and the gaseous product that is a producer gas the producer gas is similar to the one obtained after gasification we will be discussing in our next topic the other two products the solid product charcoal it is composed of 70 to 80 percent of carbon and it is giving a heat of combustion of about 30 megajoule per kg so it can be used as a fuel as a solid fuel like the coal burning of coal that could be replaced by burning of charcoal so another product bio oil that is basically composed of differently sized molecules okay they are received from the depolymerization and fragmentation reactions of cellulose hemicellulose and lignin all of these three type of uh, blocks are available in the biomass now pyrolysis itself here biomass we are fitting it inside the reactor by pyrolytic reactor then it is giving charcoal as the solid oil as the liquid and gas as the a producer gas as the gaseous output three type of fuels we are getting just yes, the term cogeneration what does that means that we are using this heat like we are using this gas we are burning it and then we are using it for producing steam and then while while the gas while the flue gases they are coming out we will pass it through the uh, some other work, uh, other channel other path which is uh, used for heating so we are along with power generation we are this is also serving the purpose of heating so cogeneration two type of operations we can perform two type of output we can get heat and electricity similarly such type of uh, the output the flue gases they can be used to heat up the input to reduce the moisture content in the feedstock or the raw material of the uh, pyrolysis process so two type of pyrolysis are there one is slow pyrolysis and one is fast pyrolysis depending on the temperature so py slow pyrolysis takes place at 450 degrees celsius it could take up to several hours to complete whereas fast pyrolysis takes place at 800 degrees celsius and it can take just about a few seconds to complete and we will get these three outputs now gasification the last thermal combustion process thermal conversion process so in gasification the solid biomass is converted into gaseous fuel that is the producer gas similar to that we are getting in a pyrolysis process but in the less quantity so the combustion of a solid fuel causes more pollution to the environment liquid causes less and the gaseous fuel causes the least pollution in the environment so on a comparison basis we can see that the gaseous fuel that is the most environment friendly the least polluting so how how does this process of gasification takes place this is the gasifier shown here the diagram of a gasifier so different processes feed the livestock here air is lim supplied but to a limited extent so first of all whatever is the feedstock available it is dried to reduce the moisture content then next stage is the pyrolysis similar but it does not stop here after the pyrolysis further air is given oxidation and reduction process takes place and the final output that is a 
that is a gas that is a producer gas this producer gas itself is a fuel its composition like nitrogen carbon monoxide hydrogen then carbon dioxide water vapor and methane because it has a heat of combustion of about 5 to 10 megajoule per kilogram so this gas producer gas can be used in engines petrol engines can run entirely on producer gas and diesel engines can be made to operate with about 60 to 80 percent diesel replacement by producer gas means it is working as a blender it is blending as a replacement so it is reducing the dependency on crude oil okay also it can be used for burning for large boiler systems like the gaseous fuel any type of gaseous fuel it can be used next process fermentation it comes under the biological conversion process so heat that is not the uh, input requirement here microorganisms the activity of microorganisms or the biological activity that is causing the conversion so feedstock is here and the output is a liquid fuel it could be methanol ethanol or butanol most common type of uh, the output that is the ethanol how it is produced it is naturally by certain microorganisms from sugar under acidic conditions so what should be the ph value 4 to 5 below 7 it is acidic so about just 0.5% of the energy potential of sugar is lost during fermentation so we can see it is highly efficient we are losing minimum amount of energy but significant amounts of process heat are required for the concentration and separation process means the process is not simple it involves many stages most common few used for bioethanol process bioethanol basically we are using the suffix bio because we are using biological methods to obtain this type of fuel so biofuel bioethanol so what is the most common type of fuel or the livestock or the feedstock which could be used as a raw material for fermentation it could be sugar crops okay sugar cane sweet sorghum cereals grain crops such as maize the ethanol very important industrial chemical so it can be used for additive to okay, use an additive to gasoline so it is also working as a fuel for internal combustion engine so our engines which are working on uh, a petrol and diesel so we can add ethanol to the petrol and diesel and then it, that is what we call blending after blending we can use that fuel the com- combined the mixed fuel as a, for the internal combustion engine like our automobile industry they can work on this um, blended uh, petrol blended diesel we will be discussing about it in our coming topics another method anaerobic digestion this also comes under biological conversion process so anaerobic digestion anaerobic means it is taking place in the absence of oxygen it is converting organic material into biogas means the fuel which we are getting the output which we are getting the end product that is a gas so what is the combination of biogas it is having methane carbon dioxide and some traces of hydrogen sulfide and moisture so hydrogen sulfide is there we need to purify it we need to filter it and what is the calorific value of biogas it is 5000 kilo calories per meter cube so the process of obtaining biogas from biomass we call it as biomethanation okay and the same gas it can be used for cooking lighting and electricity generation it can be used to drive engine as well 
okay so it can be used in the automobile sector it can be used in the power generation sector it can be used for cooking and lighting for the domestic applications as well so we can here conclude that it can almost affect or benefit many sectors including the power sector the power generation sector then automobile sector okay and considering the biomass digester the conventional biomass digester widely used in india okay so there is a gas holder the tank and the slurry mixed with water and it is fed inside this digester due to digestion the gas is produced which is accumulated inside the tank and the digested slurry that comes out in the outlet pit means the output it is the gas biogas and the left behind residue that is a slurry digested slurry even that is a source of nutrients it is not uh, just a waste it is also a source of nutrients and after this uh, digestion process that digested slurry can be used as a manure as a substitute for fertilizer as well now considering some of the conditions that how much biomass is available in india so it is estimated at 500 million metric tons per year the biomass that is produced okay now let me give you an example of the forest dry leaves dry wood this type of residues they are generated they are produced regularly similarly the agricultural waste if we just collect it the animal waste human waste if we collect it convert it into some another form of energy if we produce a fuel from it and then the fuel is burned it is over it is finished then will it affect the quality of the soil from where we have taken the this raw material like the agriculture land like the forest then yes it will affect slowly the quality of the land that will of the soil quality that will degrade nutrients it will lack nutrients so the process of a combustion the process of gasification pyrolysis and uh, fermentation we are getting some fuel as the output and whatever is left over the residue that is not useful but in case of anaerobic digestion the left over residue that is also that is useful now let us consider some practical economical and uh, environmental conditions so the surplus biomass availability about 230 million metric tons per annum which is covering agricultural and forest residues correspond to a potential of about 28 gigawatt okay, further including technically and economically optimized cogeneration in countries 550 sugar mills it will give about 14 gigawatt of energy okay then over 800 biomass power and bagas non bagas cogeneration projects aggregating to 10170 megawatt capacity has been installed installed in the country for feeding power to the grid but this is not only a small proportion only small portion of the available biomass which we are utilizing with the term bagas this term bagas what is that this is basically the residue which is left after the of residue of the sugar cane which is left over after extracting the juice of the sugar cane so it it is still working as a fuel 
now considering each sector the availability of forest and agriculture residue so out of the total geographical area of india that is 32 lakh 87469 square kilometer the 21.67% of this area that is covered by forest so about 10.5 million tons of forest residues are available every year if all of the residue would be collected okay then this will affect the soil quality erosion nutritional content of the soil they would degrade so we consider that all of the raw material or the agriculture or the forest residues we shall not collect half we shall collect half we shall place there this makes about 5.2 million tons of forest residue available for energy conversion now adding to it the agriculture residue so around 51% of india's geographical area is under cultivation and about 501 metric million metric tons of crop residue are generated annually so mean that two type of crops we consider first is the rice and, for, and another one is the wheat so rice or the paddy crop they generate 120 million metric ton of residue and wheat crop generate 80 million metric ton of residue so about 92 million metric ton of crop residue is burned we are just burning it in the open field so as to clear our uh, farms for next uh, uh, sowing season next planting next plantation season so that is a waste and also it is causing severe pollution and along with that it is also affecting the nutritional quality of the soil we are just burning the residue the stubble which is left after uh, harvesting so the rice the wheat crop residue that can be used in fodder animals can feed on it but the rice straw that is not consumed by animals okay so it needs processing so some research work is going on which is going uh, giving good signs that after some processing it is made suitable for animal fodder so animal can animals can eat it okay so there are some other applications as well the crop residue it can be burned for generating electricity it can be used as a raw material for paper or pulp industry also it can be used for ethanol production so both wheat and rice are lignocellulosic materials so high cellulose and hemicellulose contents can be hydrolyzed into fermentable sugars but high quantity of lignin makes pre treatment of rice straw mandatory so we cannot directly use it as a raw material for bio ethanol production now considering another source another type of biomass available that is the animal and human waste so how much is the population livestock population means total number of cattles pigs buffaloes available 535.78 million so this is a huge amount the total livestock population such a huge amount of animals are available here and this is also including the poultry poultry sector as well the, in this in this amount of the livestock population means cattle buffalo poultry pigs all of these including so there's a huge number and now considering human population approximately 1.3 billion is a human population in india so there is a vast resource of energy available in the form of this uh, human and animal waste so now considering the amount of waste the dung available from each of these living being on an average about 5000 million kilogram of waste or excreta is produced every day now considering some uh, factors like the human excreta carbon to nitrogen ratio is less okay which affect the biogas production can okay, now considering the agriculture waste like rice has wheat stars they have high carbon to nitrogen ratio so we can mix it human excreta and the agriculture waste and that will maximize the biogas production the process used here is the biomass digestion if we use this 
waste feed it to the biomass digester then the biogas production will be maximized now coming to the sectors lack of the ethanol so india the production of the sugar is increasing but the consumption is less as compared with the production of sugar so this is what you think this is causing a huge burden on the sugar sugar mills on the industries okay about 230 lakh million 30 lakh metric tons of sugar that is produced but consumption is less okay so the, there are 60 lakh metric ton of sugar is left unsold every year every year okay so this 60 lakh metric tons oh sorry this is wrong list but 320 320 lakh metric tons of sugar is produced but the consumption is only 260 lakh metric tons so about 60 lakh metric ton sugar that is left unsold so sugar mills they are purchasing from the farmers but that they are not able to sell it the sugar is not able to sell it so this is creating a huge burden and it is up to 19000 crore rupees so huge burden on the sugar mills so one perfect solution is the blending of ethanol that instead of producing sugar from the sugar canes produce ethanol bioethanol and blend it with a petrol and diesel so this will solve two purposes first of all the situation faced by the sugar mills they will start uh, earning profits that could be distributed with the farmers sugarcane farmers the next thing is the national biofuel policy according to which 20 parts blending blending of ethanol with petrol and 5% with diesel by 2030 Okay, so this policy will also reduce country's oil import bill, which is about 101.4 billion dollars in the last financial year. Okay, so uh, so to achieve the target by 2030, we have to increase our uh, production, ethanol production. Currently, it is only 684 crore liter capacity. It has to be increased to 1000 crore liters. so as to achieve the required target of blending our petroleum products with ethanol now considering the different type of industrial and urban waste and its energy potential so urban waste paper waste meat processing waste fruit and vegetable means the processing industries fruit processing industry vegetable processing industry then dairy with sugars slaughter house cattle farm poultry mills cassava and even leather industry total they have a potential of producing 5690 megawatt now finally coming to a conclusion that which type of biomass is most suitable for india so forest and agriculture residue okay along with the solid municipal waste they can be considered for thermal conversion process but human and animal waste that is a huge proportion of the biomass availability that is having a huge moisture level we cannot uh, use it for combustion so the process of convention uh, combustion that is not uh, the most suitable option okay whereas the endotropic digestion process very easily it can uh, the animal waste and the human waste can be used here so from where we can gather it so large number of dairy farms are there cow shelter farms cow shelter homes are there poultry farms are available okay as well as for the present scenario about 97% of households in india they are having uh, toilets so that means the collection of uh, animal and human waste that is very much feasible so now considering the fermentation process we are producing ethanol 
The ethanol can be used for the automobile industry for blending with petrol and diesel. Now it is having one byproduct, vinaise. So this vinaise, it cannot be uh, dumped anywhere. Disposal is very uh, difficult. It will spoil the environment, the soil, wherever we are dumping it. So disposal is not uh, easy, but it can be used as a raw material for anaerobic digesters. Okay, now the last advantage of the anaerobic digestion process is the nutritious digestion, the slurry which is left after the biogas production. It is still having its uh, nutritional value and can be used as a fertilizer in farming. Okay, so considering the cost of diammonium phosphate, so a 50 kg bag of the fertilizer that costs about 2400 rupees and government is giving a subsidy of 1200 rupees and farmers are paying 1200 for it, means half of the price is subsidized by the government. Now let us remove the reference, I am not including here. Okay, so total for a financial year 2021-22 or the present financial year about 94,375 crore rupees that is be given for DAB fertilizers. So if we can <coughs> so if we can utilize the slurry which is left after digestion, so we can recover a huge amount. So economically it is very beneficial. The huge amount which the government is paying for the, the subsidizing the fertilizers that can be recovered. So it is reducing the financial burden by the government as well. So it comes out that the anaerobic digestion is the most suitable method. So fertilizers are there, so there is a less chance of the deteriorating soil quality. By using the fertilizers again, the quality can be maintained. So here we come to the end of our discussion. Okay, thank you very much.